A little while ago, while bored during lockdown, I made a little spoof video clip, a Bond clip if you like, about 8K. I never intended to publish it on YouTube. It was more of a technical exercise to see what I could do with my camera, some green cloth and a laptop. But it went down surprisingly well. And I've been literally inundated with three or four requests to explain my workflow. So here it is. In the very real likelihood that you've got no idea what I'm talking about, I'll put a link to my 008 video up there. Now, the reason I started thinking about this particular Skyfall promo to experiment with is partly because it looks like Bond and Q are looking at a TV set, but much more importantly, their dialogue doesn't overlap. So surprisingly, the audio is where I started. Why, because I'm not wearing a lab coat? Because you still have spots. I went through the whole clip, dipping the audio whenever Q speaks, but leaving all of Bond's words. This obviously causes big holes in the audio. Because you still have spots. And for the first half of the clip, that isn't a problem, because I can fill all of those holes with the background atmosphere of the art gallery. I grabbed that atmosphere from the long silences near the top of the clip and copied those over the holes. That's the holes sorted. Except, here's where I met the first big problem, because the second half of this clip is plastered with background music. The Skyfall theme goes right across the dialogue, right to the end of the clip. Thank you. And I have to find that music and mix it back in to cover the holes I've just made. Luckily, I found somebody had uploaded the whole Skyfall theme. Unfortunately, waves of disappointment when I realised this promo used not just one theme, but a mix of about three different themes. I had to listen through loads of different tracks to find the three different music clips I think they used in the promo, and then fade them back into the holes I'd just punched into the audio. In this? This took hours, but what I ended up with was a clean audio track that only had Bond's words. And in all the holes, I'd filled it with atmosphere and music. And that's my clean audio track that I can start to edit with. Using this version, I could then measure the gaps between all of Bond's lines and write a script that could neatly slot in between. So now I can start thinking about the visuals. Now, obviously I'm gonna use green screen, but what I need to do is visually get rid of Q. My starting point for this is to grab still frames from the video and then use Photoshop to remove Q and paste in a new background. You don't have to be too accurate with this because you're going to cover up the joins with the green screen. But the more care you take now, the more freedom of movement you've got when you record your green screen. It helps that they're sitting in an art gallery because with a little research, I was able to download images of the missing pictures and replace the whole frame. It's at this point that I realized I had a bit of a problem because most of these frames, they move around a lot. And you'd think with a big budget Bond movie, they'd be able to afford decent tripods, but almost every shot is moving a little bit. That's a problem. Anyway, what this means is I have to track all of the background frames to the camera movement. I used a thing called Auto Tracker from Pixel Film Studios because Final Cut didn't do auto tracking at that time. Luckily, there are little white squares on a lot of these shots because it's an art gallery, which means you can track the movement quite easily. But it also means that all of your background frames need to be larger than the original screen grab to accommodate the movement. Not exactly Christmas, is it? Anyway, after a couple of days of matching, tracking and repeated trips through Photoshop, I managed to replace most of the backgrounds by cutting a mat around Q while leaving the Bond side of the frame untouched. At this point, I should give a really big shout out to Phil Holland, who shot the amazing 12K footage above New York. It's his footage that I used to 
captivate Bond's attention in the art gallery. And it's also his footage that most people use as their go-to footage to show off new 4K and even 8K televisions. I'll put a link to his original video up there. Now, it's just a case of shooting my script in front of the green screen. I left the lighting here as flat as possible so I could try to match the original look. I still don't think you can spot the difference between 8K and 4K, not at this distance. And it really helps here to shoot the highest resolution and bit rate that you possibly can. Not just to make the grade easier, but also the keying. What's that stain on your trousers? A bloody big ship. At this point, I realised I made a little error because I was wearing a jacket with a furry collar. I wanted to wear a black jacket because it matched what Q was wearing on the dirty shots where his jacket is in frame. But the furry collar was a nightmare to key with green screen. So good tip, if you're doing green screen, don't have anything furry. The trick with making green screen look as realistic as possible is to match the exact focal length and the aperture of the original shot or your background. And you want to match it as closely as possible with things like the height of the camera, the position of the camera, and most importantly, the distance to the subject. You don't have to get the framing exact, but you need to get the distance and the aperture and the focal length right for the perspective to match the background. And I took it too far. I made a huge error. On the over-the-shoulder close-ups of Bond, you can see Q is out of focus in the foreground. So I went and copied this style with the green screen shots. It's obvious to me now that this was a huge mistake. It's almost impossible to key green screen with an out of focus edge. So You'll you always get a dirty oh, key or color Q. fringing. Q. I never really solved this problem, but if I was shooting it again, I think the way to do it is to shoot all of the out of focus over the shoulder shots, shoot them sharp in focus. Do the key and then put the blur on in post. Can't think of any other way of doing it, but what I did was definitely wrong. I should have reshot those over the shoulders, but after a couple of days of fiddling, I'd finally lost the will. The hardest shot to get right here is the one where Q crosses Bond's frame, especially as the camera is so low. But I think I got it close enough so that even the footsteps match. I up -raised the original promo to 4K, and I shot all of my green screen shots in 4K as well. But when I finished the edit, I made an HD copy and I put a very slight blur across the whole thing. It helps soften up the video edges, cover up some of your joins. If I was doing this whole project again, I'd definitely shoot all of my green screen shots sharp so I wouldn't have that out of focus keying issue and I'd probably not wear a jacket with a furry collar. But on the whole, I enjoyed the technical exercise and I think I got away with it. It's amazing to me what you can produce with a DSLR, some green cloth and cheap edit software. There was a time when this would have been a really expensive project to produce. Now, it's a brave new world.